and I'm delighted to invite you all here today. So this conference is being held here on the 14th of August, 2021. And it's the beginning of the National Heritage Week. And we are part of the events taking place during Heritage Week, which is actually starting today. And it will continue on till the 20, 29th of August. So there are different events that are being held locally and nationally. And we're starting our own DHC Deaf Heritage Centre presentation today. As I said, it's the first time we have held this online in the past. It was always a case of being in conference, watching presentations. So it is different to have this online. In previous conferences, uh, we had one in 2016 that was organized by the DHC. And this is now back in February 2020 was our 10th event and it was held in person whereby um, people could sit and present one month before the country went into lockdown and in, and in compliance with, um, with the guidelines that were given, uh, we did not have our conference in February 21, 2021, but here we are there. And because of the COVID situation, we are unable to meet face to face. So I do hope that you will enjoy this conference online. So the conference is Deaf Lives Through Times and Places. And it's important to remember the times and it's the times that are historical, looking at 19th century, the 20th century, and looking what has happened during those times. And places were also important. That could be including deaf schools, prisons, courts, and there are a range of different deaf stories that are going to be presented about their life in the past, that are, and they are no longer with us. And as part of research, uh, looking at history books, it's normally about hearing, hearing politicians and so on. But very few deaf people talk about deaf, and we're hoping that this conference shows how deaf people have lived their lives in the past. There are a range of presentations of interest. Thank you. So the conference presentations will um, be presented by different people that will look at the schools where deaf people have graduated from university back in the 19th century. Hard to believe because we thought this would have been a recent phenomenon, let's say going back 20 years, but there are many others back in the past. Also, um, deaf people involved in conflict. And we will also look at deaf people as tradespeople, such as shoemakers and different traits that they had, also deaf people suffering poverty, committing crimes, ending up in prison, deaf people becoming nuns, establishing schools, and so on. So all of these um, are stories, but looking at the technical aspect of this webinar, some presentations like I am doing now, there are people present on the screen signing. Some of our presenters have provided a pre-recording because they're unable to attend today. Each of the presentations will take 
20 to 25 minutes, after which people can do a question and answer session, but only to those that are here present today. The way of doing that is you can see down at the bottom of the screen, there's a raised hand facility. Once we see that, we see that we'll sign your name, then your video will open. At the moment, you cannot um, turn on your own video. This is being managed in the background. At the start of the presentations, uh, you will see the PowerPoint on screen alongside a person that will be signing the presentation. Now, there will be a line down the screen, which means that you can manage the uh, signing of the presentation. So you can move the line across to make the screen bigger. As this is our first time conducting this online, we are expecting some technical issues, but still hope that it will run smoothly. And I'm wishing our own conference the best of luck. There are some people that I would like to thank as part of this conference in supporting the DHC, the Deaf Heritage Centre. So the supported, supporters have been the Heritage Council in funding this conference and providing the full cost for interpreters. And our interpreters today are Catherine White and Veronica White. We would also like to provide a dedication for people that have passed. One is Eamon McDevitt, who was shot by the British Army back in the past 50 years ago. And the anniversary will be on the 18th of August, which is next Thursday. We're now going to start with our first presentation and declaring the conference open. And as I said, there will be several deaf related presentations that will be presenters. Okay. I am now going to speak to the importance of the value of deaf heritage and life stories, the importance and its values. So looking at the cultural heritage, uh, this has been presented by UNESCO, UNESCO, the United Nations of Education, Science and Cultural Organization. It is an international based organization and it is about building peace by providing education, science and culture and respecting the diversity around the world. So it's about respect, patience and being non-discriminatory. Now, the value for this conference is to protect the culture, the living culture, and the way of life for deaf people. Okay, I think we're okay to continue. As I was saying, um, UNESCO is about the building of peace, the respect of cultures, and to have the protection of living culture and heritage but also to protect the freedom of expression. As part of um, culture, we've got the tangible cultural heritage that would imply buildings, books, art. So it has something that is physical that can be seen. The next slide talks about intangible, something that cannot be touched. That is, um, it can be 
oral storytelling, sign languages, memories of the past. Next slide. And other intangible heritage would be those that are endangered, which means that a person has stopped using a language that it has no longer used or they've gone on to use other languages or being colonized, being forced to use, let's say, English as a native language. However, here we talk about sign language continuing, but it's also about um, traditions such as Irish dancing, something that is visible, but not physical as intangible, and also music. So looking at an example of a tangible deaf heritage would be St. Joseph's School for the Deaf. You, it's present and you can see it. And here we've got the Thomas Mahan paintings that were involved and you can see that quite clearly. And it is quite interesting. And also you've got the Deaf Heritage Center where you can actually touch and it is there has a memory going forward. Now we would look at intangible. So when we look at intangible history, it is the history, the deaf way history. How do we denote that when people have gone into the deaf club? to interact and engage. Nowadays, it's by video interaction with the use of Irish Sign Language, ISL, and the language is maintained that way. So despite discrimination, oppression, the language of sign language has thrived. We would have also looked at folklore, be they humorous, interesting, looking at war times, there was one, one occasion where there was bombings, albeit that deaf people did not hear about it, they actually found out about it through language. So these are one of the many stories that people become aware of through sign language. So if we could move to the next slide. What is imperative here is deaf live stories. We have collated artifacts, be it posters from St. Joseph's, photography, employment that deaf people attained, be it carpentry, shoemaking. We have yet to collate more sign language videos on deaf people's lives. That's one of the areas that we need to continue working on. We need to bear in mind and remember those those lives of the past. It's imperative that we retain this information. Sign language denotes it through expression, body language and emotion. And it's important for us to retain this for our deaf heritage, which will be kept at the Deaf Heritage Centre. What is the importance of deaf live stories? It's important that we retain deaf people's identity, identity. We have the same as, we identify with, we have shared experiences. It gives a person a sense of confidence to have shared same and similar experiences by attending deaf schools, deaf clubs, which is very different to nowadays with the deaf clubs being closed, but we do have these shared experiences. We are able to identify that we see that we are not the only ones. We have been able to have a shared experience through our shared language, that of sign language. We will now look at this video clip and it is to show the shared experience of sign languages throughout the world, and I will go into more detail after the video. So if we can play the video now. And again, with technical, 
we will we will look to getting this sorted out in just a moment. My name is Kenya Lowe. I was born in Tacoma, Washington. I'm from a small island close to China. I'm from another country far away in South America. I grew up in Detroit. I was born hearing and became deaf at the age of two. At about the age of three, I became sick, and as a result of that, became deaf. I was sick, became deaf. I did not understand that as I was growing up. My parents had no idea what to do with me. My father wanted me to be hearing, and he tried to find a doctor that would allow me to regain my hearing. At the age of four, there were people in the church who signed. When they realized I was deaf, they signed the word shoes. And I was like, oh, okay, shoes. The school was awful, very strict. When you were caught signing, you were punished by being slapped on the hands for it. The teachers wouldn't sign. Signing wasn't allowed. We had to do lip reading. There was always one that would teach us the signs. We started by fingerspelling. I may not have seen the spelling first. But we were always trying to learn new signs, but it was always in secret. It was a very frustrating experience when the teachers turned around and we weren't able to understand what was being said. Always trying to figure out. And we did that by watching everybody else. My sister did it well at the DTM with total communication. And in the past, we wouldn't have had interpreters. Now we communicated just fine with the teachers and the staff, but then we had the house mothers. That was quite difficult to understand. Then we needed to do a lot of processing. In 10th grade, when I was in school, they were just saying that the classes were full mechanics, but I had wanted to be able to do that. However, I was always told that hearing people were served first, and I was the last to get what it was that I had been asking for. I had an interpreter for the first life in my senior year. Prior to that, I did not, which was a huge improvement, obviously, with the interpreter. When I was young and I was in psychology, did well. Then after four years, I switched, moved on to my master's in Western Maryland College. I then got my bachelor's degree. I majored in the dietetic program. This is me, Tom, and my graduating class. I first got a job as a draftsman. They saw my drawing samples and emailed me. However, when they realized I was deaf, that bothered them. So I got a woman to speak for me, and then I was able to do my job. I found a job in a pottery factory. I was on an assembly line. Hey, it was decent. I thought I would teach ASL to begin with, and I have been doing that for the last number of years. I got a job as a technician. I owned my business, and I was responsible 
for everything, including taxes and finances. The college accounting class certainly did help me. I have now been promoted to marketing. I'm in the marketing department of the AT&T Relay. So I was told by a deaf man that if I can do it, then you can do it. So when you see me and you see that I can do it, you too can do it. Just to ensure that the attendees can see me. The importance of these clips is to denote through sign language and sign language being recorded that the experiences of people who are deaf throughout the world are similar. The experiences of attending school, the communication issues, some have been very successful. And what has been important is our sense of identity. Our life stories matter. When we see the presentations throughout the day, you will see the lives of deaf people and how interesting their lives have been. Presentations going forward will have some video presentations. We will be recording this session. Some presentations are pre-recorded, of which you will see.